At least one million people lost their lives 17 years ago in the Rwanda genocide. The stories of the survivors are being commemorated in Rwanda at the Kigali Genocide Memorial Center thanks to another institution that is also dedicated to preserving their memory. Elizabeth Lee reports. Copy good odd fields onto bad even fields. Yves Camaros and three of his colleagues have traveled thousands of miles from home to the University of Southern California to learn how to best document and preserve a painful past. My other brother and my parents were both kids. Camaros was only 13 when the Rwandan genocide occurred. He said the worst part of the experience is the aftermath. First of all, you ask questions like why that happened, and then why that to you and, and, and to your family. But at the same time, you get to ask yourself why you're alone. For example, when you start going to schools, you find it difficult because no parents. For Camaros, talking about his experience and sharing it with other survivors helps. It's important because you get to learn the experience of others. At some point you may feel that you, you're a lucky survivor because you may see that some others has experienced uh, horrible things than you, you did. So I think sharing stories is a, it's a part of the healing process. Camaros now heads the documentation center at the Kigali Genocide Memorial Center in Rwanda. He has videotaped and interviewed other survivors of the genocide. He says since 2004, his team has collected 200 interviews. There are more than 300,000 survivors. But the difficult question is that are they ready to start talking? For many survivors, it is still too soon. The Rwandan genocide was 17 years ago, but for me, it was this morning. It's still that vivid. Retired Lieutenant General Romeo Dallaire was the force commander of the UN peacekeeping force during the Rwandan genocide. He says it is important for survivors to tell their stories so the suffering caused by the brutality of their attackers is not lost to the rest of the world. The rest of the world also lost its sense of humanity because it let that slaughter happen. It, we saw it in the media, we heard about it, it was going on for a hundred days and we did Nothing. The Shoah Foundation Institute at the University of Southern California has been collaborating with a Rwandan team collecting the survivor interviews. Established in 1994 by movie director Steven Spielberg, after his movie Schindler's List, the Shoah Foundation Institute collected 52,000 testimonies of the survivors of the Holocaust. Now the Institute is training Camaros and his colleagues to better conduct interviews and how to store, preserve and archive the survivors' stories. The Institute is also collecting video testimonies of the survivors of the genocides in Cambodia and Armenia. Executive Director of the Institute Stephen Smith says, while each case is different, but we absolutely need to be able to compare the causes and the consequences of genocide. If we know what happened and we understand the pattern and the similarities, it gives us that early warning and nobody knows better than the victims what happens in a situation of genocide. So their voices are a warning for our future. The survivor stories from Rwanda and other countries will be sent to computer servers in California and then distributed to 34 universities and museums around the world where the voices of the survivors can be heard. Elizabeth Lee for VOA News, Los Angeles.